Hey guys, how's it going? I, you can't see, but it's Patrick, and he's wishing you a happy... Cinco de Mayo, that's what it was. I went to get Taco Bell before, and the line was freaking down the block. Half a mile down the block. I was like, I'm not fucking getting this up. So I didn't. Um, moving into the, right into it, a lot of sales that day. Mostly from me, some from private auctions. I, and I want to say mostly from me, most of my research, not some from others. But you'll see. Uh, we had a Dark Weezing, first edition PSA 9, sell for $61 hairs. We had a Pikachu, we had two of them. Both first edition, both PSA 9s. One was 356 the other was 355 We had a Feraligator, Neo Genesis, first edition PSA 7, number 4. So the one that is more common, easier to grade, sold for 64 And if we do the math, PSA 8, if we double it, that'd be 128 The 9 would be, if we double it again, one, uh, 256 And that makes sense because if I sold mine for 215 like two weeks ago, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's uh, that makes sense. The growth is uncanny. Uh, Ursa Ring, first edition. My friend Joe got this. It was a raw copy. I would have given it like a 6 to a 7. Whitening, some scratching on the hollow. It sold for 30 bucks. Um, yeah, that re reinforces my idea that if you have a, a raw copy of a card and you're just like, this is probably get, you know, a 6 or a 7, people pay a, like what would going rate for a 7 or an 8 because people are just like, ah, I could, I could grade it and they'll hope and not knowing that PSA is so freaking strict nowadays. Anyway, I digress. Um, Gengar, first edition fossil, PSA 9. I said the other day, it sells between 230 and 330 right now. 233, that's what it sold for. We had a Dark Blastoise, first edition PSA 9, sell for $280. I think that was the record price point for a couple of hours until a few hours ago. Dark Blastoise, first edition PSA 9. This one was from Coin and Rarities, or Coin Rare, whatever it's called. No, Coin Rare is a website where you buy silver. Anyway, um... He's the one that always has a crazy auctions where people not only always pay record prices, but there's multiple people. Like this one, the seventh bid was two thirty five. The sixth bid was the previous record. That that the previous record price point, Dark Blast size PSA now is two hundred and eighty dollars as of a few hours before that, and then two ninety, three ten, three twenty, three forty eight. 353, regular price point. Um, I, I don't know if you see a retrace. Probably see a retrace because up until that 280, the first one, it was like 220, maybe. 250, you know, so it's it's insane. Maybe 250, I don't know. Blaine's Arcanine, first edition PSA 9, did see a bit of a retrace here. That sold for 455. We had a Charizard Gold Star PSA 9 sell for $2.6,000 or best offer. Not sure 100% what it sold for, even 2K. That's that's great. Uh, Dark for Alligator, first edition PSA 10. This is the one that I kept saying I should have bought. I should have bought 750 your best offer, and I had it at 650. It just I got another one for like 420. I was like fucking sold. Um, but yeah, this that sold for 650, and and I should have got it because that is that is a fantastic buy of a card that should be a thousand dollars. There's only 61 PSA 10 copies, and anyway, Blaine's Charizard first edition PSA 8. Sold for five hundred and twenty-eight dollars, so that reaffirms my belief in what's that. Again, the PSA nines that did sell for a thousand. Then we had like three or four of them hit the market at the same time, fell to like eight nine hundred. Um, so yeah, the the nine I truly believe is a thousand dollar card right now. Clefable pre-release uh, PSA seven sold for three ninety nine. Makes sense because the eight just a little while ago sold for like eight fifty. Um, so th this makes sense that it get just got that under four hundred or four hundred dollars. Mewtwo, Gold Star, PSA 8, from the X holland Phantoms. I'm, again, I, my, my specialty is Watsy. I, I don't really know Gold Stars. I'm just getting into them. But that sold for 340 That will tell me that, let's say, the 9 sells for, let's say, about, let's say the 9 would sell for 680 Minimum of 3 So the, the 10 is a minimum of $2,000 for that card. Or it should be. Um, but most likely, if the 9 is 680 it'd probably be a probably be a $3,000 card. Three, 3 to 4 uh, moving past that, we had a Misty Cedra first edition PSA nine, uh, sold for fifty six bucks. Balloon Pikachu. This is the one I've showed before. It's the glossy balloon Pikachu, not the one with the actual airline in the back, but it's balloon, and it's from Coral Coral Comics from nineteen ninety seven. I believe that PSA ten is worth minimum seven hundred dollars, if not a thousand, because there's like eighteen of them, maybe twenty PSA ten copies. Exceedingly rare. It's old, 
and the PSA 9 sold for $95. That that should minimum... Well, yeah, all right, yeah. That, that should be, I think, a couple hundred, but anyway, 95 it sold for. Or it was the best offer, too, so it could have sold for 80 We don't know. We had a PSA uh, Tidal Wave, um, you know, the Tropical Wind Tidal Wave PSA 8 from 2005. Sold for eight hundred dollars, you know, for a st it was a staff stamp, so you know. But and PSA eight two thousand five. All right, so the two thousand eight two thousand nine tropical winds are something that is very, I don't want to say very common because they're not, but they are common in the sense of these, you know, soft trophy cards, which is what they are. They're only handed out at worlds, uh, you know, those worlds tournaments, and you know, I have you know, a couple up for auction right now that are, they're not up for auction, they're just on my eBay store, and they are, um, the 2008 I have, the staff copy, which is, I think, 24 copies of the PSA Pop Report, there's just 24 total, not just the 9 or 10, there's just 24 of the set, like, at all, so if you buy one, you buy 4% of the freaking Pop Report, which is insane, so I have the staff as PSA 9, and there's only four that's greater than 10. And then I also have a top 32, which there's like seven or 10 in the pop report. And the nine is as high as you can get. Uh, like there's no tens, like they're just not. Um, so I have a couple of those and and those are the cheapest. The 2008s and 2009s are the, are the cheapest because 2010 is a little bit rarer. 2007 is rarer. And it, it just 2005 is definitely rarer. So that makes sense that... I don't know if that's a new record price point, that $800 for that staff card. Um, it, it might even be worth more because of how rare it is. Uh, another thing from 2005, Tropical Tidal Wave, is a PSA 9 copy of the staff, which sold for $1,500. Goddamn. <laughs> this is amazing. So they had a, a PSA 9, a Blaine, oh no, no, a PSA 9 base set Charizard. We had one PWCC auction, which sold for $9,000, record price at that time until... Like last week, we had a PSA 9 base set Charizard sold for $10,000 record price point. And the reason why uh, I'm, I'm okay with that price, you know, obviously it went from 5 to 7, to, to skip the 8s, went to 9, and then and now it's at $10,000 for that card. God, I remember when the PSA 10 was like 6000 It's like 10 years ago. Um, we have a PSA... 10 sale for that Charizard. First edition, so the rookie Charizard. First edition PSA 10 Charizard, privately sold uh, sometime in the last few weeks for $45,000. So that is, if we do the 10 sells for five to eight times with the nine sells for, that was a record price point. The 10 would have a little bit to catch up if there wasn't an offer already made for $55,000 for one of them. There's this guy, King Pokemon. He's on uh, Instagram. He's on eBay. I think he's on YouTube as well. And he, the guy from uh, Pawn Stars, and he had an offer, I think, for fifty-five grand for one of his. I don't know if he sold one or not, but that was the offer. Um, and speaking of offers that have not good offers that have not uh, sold that have not come to fruition, there was this guy on E4 that was looking for a first edition base set box unopened, and you know this is a card that a couple like a year and a half ago, two years ago, sold for fifty thousand dollars. And then privately again, I think SM Prab bought one for like seventy thousand. He was asking eighty thousand dollars for one, and nobody would bid. Nobody was biting. He would have like a record price point, eighty thousand dollars, cash in hand. Like there's no auction house fees, there's no eBay fees, there's there's none of that. He would offer eighty thousand dollars from him to you or her. I don't know, you know, and nobody was biting. So. Here's where I'm talking about that. You could get an entire PSA 10 set, that whole first edition PSA 10 set for all of them for like 100, 120 grand. So he wanted the box because people open boxes. They open boxes for packs. The boxes are going to be your greatest asset for growth. They're going to be the greatest alternative asset. Like cards can move up and down all day. And the minimum that's going to happen is that they're going to stay at a certain point. A little bit of growth because people are going to open boxes. They're going to grade them and the pop report will slowly increase. But the boxes 
Again, not knowing how many that there are, so hard to come by. There was a fucking... All right, so speed of boxes, we had a, a Neo Genesis first edition a box sealed. $14,000. You could have gotten that like a year and a half, two years ago for four grand, three grand, whatever. And as long as we're talking about boxes, we had a jungle box at, the, at this auction again. First edition box sold for $7,000. Two years ago, that box was $700. Ten times your money. Like, I'm buying Tesla, and I'm buying Square, and I'm buying Illumina. Stocks that I think will get me 10x in five to seven years. You're getting 10x on your return in two years. Not having to do any... Re just... Just buy a box. Any fucking box. Fucking Christ. Because people keep buying these boxes and they say like... And they're burning through them so fucking fast. They're burning through these boxes because what they're doing... Which short term is very, very intelligent. Short term what they're doing is taking these boxes... And they have a YouTube channel and they say like... Guys, this is what I'm going to do. You're going to auction... I'm going to auction off these packs. I'm not going to get any for myself. They're going to open the boxes. They're going to open the cards on YouTube... And they're going to be like, okay, so this one bought this pack for $2,500. Uh, this is uh, for going out to Stephanie K. Stephanie K, this is what you're getting. And he, you know, does the thing where the hollow goes in the back, goes all the commons, and then that reaction, like, oh my god, you got this! This is insane! So this is your box, Stephanie! And then, you know, he, he does it, and I've seen multiple people do this, and it's fun. It's exciting. Don't get me wrong. It's great. And these people that are doing it are making... They're making money. They're making money off the ad revenue for YouTube. They're making money off the packs because if they're doing uh, however much for packs divided by 30, they're, they're charging a premium for it. Like they're not just doing a, say like giving you the packs at cost. Like no, they're charging a premium so they can make money. So they're making money off the packs. They're making money off the ad revenue and probably the followers that they get, Instagram, whatever it is. And they're doing this every week. Doing this every week, every month. Multiple people are doing it. The amount of boxes is finite. You can't just make another box. You could maybe buy someone's collection re and grade a card. You know, something that's okay. That, that you're, you're not going to get mint cards consistently. You're just not going to fucking get that. So what you're doing is you're taking these finite amounts and you're just destroying... Like, again, you're using it and you're making money short term. But long term, that's fucking retarded. Like, you're fucking stupid. Like that is okay, short, short, short term smart. Well, like that's the same as being penny wise and pound foolish. You are gonna make ten x off your money in a couple of years. Right? Like, and it's not just like, oh, this is my prediction. This is what's gonna happen? No, that, that's the data. That's the data right there. And obviously, the cards that are getting that are growing, the cards that you've seen. I bought again that PSA ten first edition PSA ten Blaine's Charizard seven hundred seventy dollars in December, fucking December. And a few months later, it's five times as much now. In like four months, it's fucking nuts. It's fucking insane. So you're get... the growth on this is incredible, and like on the on the cards, the population report can really only go up. Like like if you have let's say a dark Charizard, which had uh, had sold recently for like. 2.5, 2.2K. The last of them had sold for $2.2,000 for Dark Charizard First Edition PSA 10 from the Rocket set. Now, that's the card you want. Uh, now there's a Dark Magneton. That's also, uh, it's it's very hard to grade. There's, there's a small amount of them, and, you know, people want that. But but the main ones you want is Charizard. Like, any set that has Charizard, it's going to sell. It's going to do really well. And that one is $2.2,000. And you have 427 PSA 10 copies. Or two years ago, there's like 200 something, maybe 300 something. But you have, that's only going to grow. That amount, the available, the amount of cards in the world of that particular grade is only going to go up. It, it's only going to go up. The amount of those boxes is only going to go down. They're only going to go down, they're only become more and more scarce. So even though the cards, the population will only go up, the price will increase as well. But those boxes are only they're gonna be scarcer and scarcer. That's probably like after I finish my gym challenge set and I get those other two cards that I need. Boxes. That's it. Trophy cards and boxes. It's really all I'm gonna be doing. Because oh, the growth is 
freaking insane. Oh my god, I don't even... Alright, moving on to the next box. Uh, we had a first... Not a first... It was a base set box. It was the Green Wing Charizard. So obviously people that... For people that don't know, I'll say the Green Wing Charizard, that has a chance to be shadowless. So that box that sold for $10,000 for the chance that it could be shadowless. <laughs> this is the Green Wing. <sighs> Pokemon is... This is nostalgic. I, I never had a box growing up. I had cards. I, I never even had the first edition. I, I've seen them, and I was like, oh, you know, minus the Machamp. But this is... God, it's incredible. So, moving outside of that, that that's just my, my, my take. Like I said, I'm so... Like, stocks, I'm so bullish on Tesla. I'm so bullish on Illumina. I'm so bullish on Square. And that has millions and millions of shares for those guys that are... Again, I think will get me 10x in the next five to seven years on my money. And nope, I'm buying those because p people buy them because yeah, they're they're good and you know they're good companies. But people that are buying those stocks, they're buying them specifically just to make money. They're not buying them because of love. They're not buying them because of nostalgia. Nostalgia is one of the most powerful things in the world. Like last year when Fuller House came on Netflix, that, you know, reimagining or, or, or re-sequel to Full House came out 20, 20, 30 years ago. The, it, it wasn't the most watched show on Netflix because it was good. <laughs> it wasn't good. It was the most watched show on Netflix because of nostalgia. When people, like the, the reason why... The It movies do so good. Why Stranger Things does so good. Yes, they're, they're good quality. They're, they're very well made. Not effort goes into them. But the nostalgia because it ha that takes place in the 80s. People are nostalgic for what they wanted growing up. You see it with baseball cards. You see it with magic. Pokemon cards, which is... Pokemon, the reason why I'm into Pokemon cards and not baseball and not magic... Because I grew up with it. Because it is... The highest grossing media franchise of all time. And every time I go and I post a card on eBay, every time I go and I write a description, I have to take a step back and I have to take a second. I have to look at that card. I have to read it. I look at the artwork, look at the attacks, and it takes me back to a time when life was just simpler. Where life was just not easy, but it was simple. You just... That's what you did. You played Pokemon, and it was the mechanics of the game, the trading card game, what you did. Like, it's, it brings you back to that feeling. Stocks won't get you that. You know, stocks you can make money with, but as more people get into this hobby, which there's a minuscule, even though it's the highest grossing media franchise of all time, even though there is so much popularity with the... Pikachu, like, you could go anywhere in the world, people will know who Pikachu is. They'll know, like, minus, like, some parts of, like, Africa or India. Even, ah, any place that has internet, man, it's gonna know who fucking Pikachu is. And despite the popularity of Pikachu and going anywhere and getting sneakers and shirts, and there's so few people in the hobby with this. Some people might have their old collections from back in the day. Some people might have their stuff in binders. They might have their stuff in, not just uh, binders, um, they might have some old, you know, the games that they're like, oh, you know, now in quarantine, maybe, you know, they'll play the games back in the day. So few people collect these cards. But the amount has been growing exponentially. Like, the, the curve of it is just, okay, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, spike. And there's been spikes, you know, little, little, little spike. And even if there weren't, any more new people to get into the hobby. These prices would still be going up because most people that are in the hobby are my age, are late 20s or early 30s. And you don't make peak income until you're about 40 years old. You don't make, like, when you're in your, especially in your 20s, like, I, I was poor most of my life. And you, you just don't. You have a little bit of money, but even if no other people join the hobby, the people that are in it right now, are going to continue to buy these cards. They're going to make more money. The prices are going to go up, but that's not the case. New people get in the hobby every day. And sometimes all it takes is a couple people to like one certain card for that to go through the roof because the availability is low. 
Charizard, the Dark Charizard, PS, first edition PSA 10 from Rocket Set. The reason it's still getting $2.2,000, even though there's 427 PSA 10 copies, is because they, they're not, they're, the scarcity of some of these cards, even with several hundred copies, they're scarce. You don't, you can't get them consistently. You can't get like 10 of them. Like it's just, it will take months. It will cost a blue bloody fortune to try to do. And that's with one of the weaker Charizards, you know, out of the first four, you know, you have the base set and then you have dark and you have Blaine's Charizard. You have the Shining Charizard, and I know there's Legendary and Base Set 2, but those don't really count. But that's... <sighs> Any new artwork Charizard, that's the weakest one, and, the, and it's still not consistently available. So this is, I'm going to freak out for 20 minutes. I'm sorry. Um, that, that's just <laughs> what I'm doing. The, I want you guys to make money. I want you guys to go over this data and just... <laughs> it's, it's just have fun with it. It's, it's have fun. Um... Anyway, that's it. I love you all. Please comment, subscribe, serve the crazy hair. Happy single day, Mile, guys.